Welcome to Smithville, Texas Eco Photo Festival webinar series. I'm Jill Struby, the chair of the Smithville Area Chamber of Commerce and one of the founders of EcoFest. Although this is the first time the Eco and Photo Festivals are linked together, both of them had been a tradition in Smithville for about 10 years. We're experimenting between this connection between Eco and Photo, which is actually something our guest speaker has been talking about for a very long time now, so we're really pleased to have him here today. We are also experimenting with this virtual format and we truly appreciate you, the viewer, and your enthusiasm for these topics. Be sure to check out the other presentations on a wide variety of issues connecting eco and photo. Today, I am very happy to bring you Randy Kerr, who is a Smithville resident and lighting educator for the craft of photography. We're so grateful that he's living in among us in Smithville area. Randy has photographed important people and events all over Texas, including the grand opening at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, the Bob Bullock State History Museum, and the Austin Convention Center. You can see him and his work on shows such as ABC's World News Tonight, the History Channel, and NBC's Today Show. The World Travel Market of London, England names Randy as one of the top 10 photographers for ecotourism. So we're really happy to have him here today. Randy is also a fantastic educator. He has lectured at seven professional photography of America schools, National Photo Expos, and he is the founder of the Austin Soul of the City Portrait Symposium. Randy's focus is to educate filmmakers and photographers on how to achieve quality light in image capture while exposing meaningful humanitarian topics and the environmental necessity of green living. In 1996, Randy purchased land on Ad Ann Powell Road, very close to the city here, cleared 11 areas for the purpose of broadcasting and teaching his methodology of light and image capture known as the Compass Code, which we're really excited to be talking about. You can join him at 11 Savannahs to learn from this guru of light and image. Thank you, Randy, for being part of the program today. And I'm turning it directly over to you now. Thanks. You're welcome. And thank you, Jill. And, and thank you for Smithville for having me. Uh, it's been a joy to be here. Um, we are going into our 25th year, having our 25th anniversary at 11 Savannahs on Ann Powell Road. It started off uh, with a dream, actually. And, uh, April, if you can go to the next slide. Um, years ago, 25 years ago, I was uh, teaching photography at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center in Austin, Texas. And I had this profound dream that I was living in an army tent in the forest. And just three days after the dream, I, I met a gentleman from Smithville named Carlos Klutz uh, that made my dream come true by shaking my hand and, and getting me into that property on Ann Powell Road. So this image was the first night that I lived primitively uh, under the stars. This is my little ragtop lean-to tent that was uh, uh, 25 years ago. So when I look in the mirror now, I can see how time progresses. Let's look at the next one. Um, this is an image of me in my army tent. And what I did uh, in those days was I'd hold a compass in my hands and I would map the path of the sun. I was literally uh, on a path that I I didn't fully understand the journey I was on because so much of our life is foreshadow. So it's hard to understand why it's coming together as it does. Um, my father spoke in terms of the compass and he taught us turn right, turn left. No, he said turn north or turn south. And I was moved into this army tent. I'm convinced to learn uh, more about lighting and the relationship of light as it pertains to photography and, the, and creation the alignment of, of the solar system and our star and our planet. Let's go to the next slide. So it's 25 years later. Uh, this is uh, a plant uh, known as snow on the mountain. And in the background is my archway. And that is the front of a large compass that I've carved out of the forest. You can see it if you fly over the top of my land to land at the uh, Smithville airport, you can look down and see this archway and this large compass in the ground. The uh, sidewalk lines up with summer solstice because in the compass code uh, methodology that we teach from, it's about that relationship of something called the analemma. And that is the seasonal position of the sun in the sky based on seasons. Let's go to the next slide. All right, just a nice, beautiful, simple butterfly. Now the snow on the mountain is a, a great attractor to pollinators. And uh, what I learned at the Wildflower Center is what set my course on, on being careful of what we do with our plants and our front yards and making sure we're, we're providing food sources for pollinators, bees, bats, uh, all of the things that makes our, 
ecosystem here in the Lost Pines area work. Let's move on to the next slide. And a, just a beautiful shot of a white-tailed deer. I took this just yesterday morning. Now that the fall season has come in and the, the, the bucks are coming in closer and closer. And um, most of these young bucks were probably born on the property. We have about 20 that bed down at 11 savannas at night. And my wife, Beth and I, we are in the Lost Pines uh, conservation program for the Houston toad. So part of that program is making sure that we give good food sources to our deer. Uh, so we actually feed um, an antler max uh, to the, uh, the babies and the does and the bucks for stronger bones. And let's go to the next one. Now this is an image of a sunset. Uh, I love driving out into the park road and looking for these abstract forms in the woodlands uh, and we do this by way of mapping the path of the sun. Uh, I've got a, uh, a, a, a little piece I'll show you at the end of this program on how we utilize the compass code uh, in, in way of being in the field. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so let's look at this image for a minute. This is a little teaching moment. Now imagine if you could map the path of the sun, know where the sun is going to be at that time of the day, that's gonna give you this beautiful light. Now, this is just an average snapshot. Anyone can take it. But the value in mapping the sun is uh, allowing you to get into a position where you know the light is gonna change as time goes by throughout the course of the day. So this next image coming up, let's look at this one. Here's the same location uh, much later in the day. But how did we know where that light was going to be? We, we, we do this by mapping the path of the sun. We're, we're north of the equator. So that means that the sun is always traveling in southern-ish directions throughout the course of the day. It rises in the southeast. It travels across the sky. Noon is not directly over our head because we do not live on the equator. It's softly to the south. And as the world turns, it makes the sun appear to set. But never forget, it's the world that's spinning on its axis and uh, the earth and the sun relate with each other in an elliptical fashion. And so this allows us to plan for the analemma and allows us to plan for the light quality that we want in a photograph. Let's look at the next slide. All right, so here's an image to take this and really drive it home. And I hope that uh, you enjoy this as much as I do. Um, this is a, a, just a tree stump down at, the, uh, down at the River Bend Park. And it's the one that has the eagle um, carved into the side of it. We're, we're facing this tree in the same direction in which the light is striking the tree. And let's go to the next slide. So I'm going around behind the tree and I'm looking up into the sky and I see how bright the sky is and look at the value of the tree trunk itself. Now, here's something I want you to listen closely to. The human eye is extremely limited. And as an observer of life for me, this is my 41st year as a professional photographer, I wanna share with you, I'm not sure what the world looks like because I only can see the world through my human eye. I, I cannot see it in any other way. But watch what happens when we start to close down with a feature on the camera called exposure compensation. That's the little plus minus button that you have right at the tip of your camera we're in the program mode. I've got my camera set on average metering. I'm just getting an average snapshot. Now I'm gonna to go to minus one on exposure compensation. Let's look at this picture, next slide. And so you can see that there's a little bit of color coming into the sky now. It's not just completely blown out. That's minus one exposure. The tree trunk is darker and so is the sky. Let's go to minus two. Let's go to the next slide. You see what's happening? We're starting to see some, that there's some color up there. That color was there. Now we can't pick that up with our human eye, but the camera can because it has an ISO that is the sensitivity of the camera. It has an aperture which regulates how much light comes into the camera at the size of the hole. Then we also have a shutter that goes off during a duration of time known as a shutter speed. One more time, minus an additional stop of exposure compensation. Let's go to the next slide and see what's happening. We're starting to get some real mood into the sky. Let's look at the very last one. And there it is, that same tree trunk that we saw earlier that just looked like a, a normal snapshot. You just take the time to walk around that tree 
and look at it the other direction and then close that lens down. Just realize that as a human being, we do not have full control of how we see the world. We do not have full control over that. And we have to open up to something called perception. How do we perceive something? What we see is one thing, but what else could possibly be there? When you learn this technique, you're going to learn how to perceive things that are present that you wouldn't normally be aware of. And I call that situational awareness, okay? Let's go to the next slide. Same thing here. I've just taken that same idea. Y'all have all probably seen this tree. It's on the way to Bucky's down 71 as you leave Smithville. And when you come over the top of that horizon off to the left, you'll see this beautiful loblolly pine that's sitting right off to the left of you. I just pulled over on the side of the road one day. It was a white sky. I closed it down with exposure compensation. Again, that's the little plus minus button on your camera. And we get this professional look. Um, we didn't have to go about this with any real in-depth understanding of light. We had to go into it with a perception that there's more color in the world than we can see with our eye. We put the camera on average metering. So it's just trying to create an average uh, exposure. And then we're using exposure compensation by minusing down and darkening that sky down. And it's giving you these rich colors. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Here's the War Angel at the Memorial Park here in Smithville. Same thing. It's a black and white. I love black and white because you can explore tonality. You can look for highlights, shadows, and all the values of light in between uh, when you work with black and white. And so often in classes, I, I want to inspire people to learn lighting in the old school of the grayscale, just like Ansel Adams. And my great grandfather did it out of a covered wagon in the 1800s. We had to understand that the camera is tuned to the middle value of gray. It's tuned to that. Pause. Every camera on the planet is tuned to the middle value of gray. Now, our job as artists is to say, this is what a proper exposure is, but I want to make an artistic exposure. And that's done by understanding how to work with that grayscale. I don't believe that that'll ever change. We can take pictures and we can run them through filters and you can not know what's making it look good. But I'll share with you friends, there's nothing more fulfilling than knowing why something is changing and understanding how to control it. Uh, and that's the real value of remaining a student in photography. So let's move to the next one. There's the pond uh, just before you get to the loop road out by the railroad tracks. Same idea. The sky was not that blue. I promise you it was so almost so bright that I, uh, you, would, you would just pass by it thinking there's nothing there to photograph. But what you have to come to the realization is what is present and, and how are you perceiving the scene? Let's go to the next one. This is a woodland abstract um, and that's a very large tree. And I love to uh, get that sun and drop that exposure down and create those deep, deep shadows and then as we walk around in front of the subject, we can actually place that tree in different locations around the tree based on how we move around this side of the tree. So if I wanted the, the sun to be lower on the trunk, I would either walk up closer to it, what would happen? The sun would rise. If I backed up from it, the sun appears to set on it. So our vantage point and camera placement, along with the zoom of our lens, can do a lot of things for a photograph. Let's move on. Now here's a shot I thought would take you guys to downtown Smithville at night. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know the folks down at the wine bar uh, through for some photography and we have a lot of mutual friends. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of the wine bar and I wanna do a shot to drive home one of our, our artists that is living in our community now, James Robinson. So I'm gonna ask him to step in and we'll look at the next slide. So here's James. Now notice this image of James He's clearly in focus, so the image is certainly about him. So the wine bar becomes the silent secondary subject. It's further back. And so you can actually pick what is gonna be the subject, what's gonna be the silent secondary subject or the anchoring of the scene setter by where they're placed within the scene. Now I brought a Westcott LED Solex light in 
and I matched the light on James's face that was striking the light on the building. And that's how that relationship of the light takes place is you want to, to learn to look at the scene, identify where middle value is on the scene, and, and then place that same amount of light on the subject matter and take a shot, take a look at it, and uh, you'll see how this process works. Let's look at the next one. And look at what I've done here is I've gotten in closer to James. I've zoomed into him to really get a closer shot of his face. It's got less environment. So it becomes more about him being an artist. You want to be careful about having too many subjects in your photograph. Before, we really didn't know what the photograph was, was about. It was about a guy standing in front of a building. Now it's about an artist that's in front of a building. And I think that that's how we, we find our differences as we, we move around with our camera until we sense something internally. Henry cartier Bresson, the great grandfather of journalism, said that you wanted to wait to click the picture. And remember, this was the time of film, so it cost you money every time you clicked it. You want to click the picture when you feel visually satisfied. I've always said I'm seeking visual transformation that makes me uh, feel something internally. I don't take the picture unless my emotions shift. If my emotions are in the same place, then I haven't shifted. I haven't moved into this new space. And, you know, when people look at the work, they, they, they tend to see something really familiar in your works. Uh, what they are finding in my work is that I'm waiting and feel, until I feel emotionally transformed. And that's when I'm taking the picture. Now, these are images for teaching. So I typically wouldn't go through the first few of those. I would get straight to this type of look. And this is done by studying the distance ratio, the distance from the lens to the subject and the subject to the background. This is a one to three distance ratio. I'm seven feet from the subject with my lens, and then I'm 21 feet to the background. And that's what gives that shot this compression. Let's move to the next slide. Here it is a higher contrast tonality. And I've just done something totally different. I've asked him to lean his body out and I'm taking the camera and I'm bending the camera this way a little bit to kind of look at that wine bar uh, sign in the background. It's kind of bent over a little bit. That kind of creates a little Batman effect. It's what I call the Batman effect. If y'all remember Batman in the 60s, but uh, just kind of tilting just a little bit and never, never doing everything just straight on. That's how the world sees the world. It's so we want to get away from the way the world just walks around and then they stop and take a picture. It's always that extra effort that makes a beautiful photograph come together. Let's go to the next one. This is a nice shot of James with the general store in the background. So what I've done is I've metered the light on the truck in the background. And I know that that's 5.6. Now I simply have to put 5.6 on the mask of his face. And then those tonalities all come together. My grandmother actually taught me how to do this. She taught me how to do my very first bridal portrait session because her father was a photographer and she traveled as a child in a covered wagon. He too had to know what the middle value was. How she explained it to me was, this is my grandmother, Artie Kerr. She said, look at the world as though it is a big stained glass window and find the middle value of light in the stained glass window. Now make sure the bride is pulled away from the stained glass window. You put the exact same amount of light on her. Now, what have you done? You've matched the bride with the tone in the window that happens to be middle intensity or a middle reflectivity. That's the grayscale and that's what we teach, okay? So let's move on. This is a, a shot of, uh, of James and Shara down by mother's uh, re uh, restaurant, my mother's place. And I've used those lights to kind of blow out of focus and just kind of get a nice romantic kind of thing. And you can see how the shadow was placed there on, on the side of J James's jaw. That's done by where the light is placed. And in our programs, we teach light placement. There are six styles of light placements that the Renaissance painters uh, taught the world. And uh, I teach those six styles in my, pro uh, excuse me, my program called Light 360. Okay, let's move to the next. And uh, this is just a simple shot of my uh, front porch. It's my green screen at 11 Savannah's where I'll broadcast my uh, information. Uh, we're excited about it. COVID kind of threw us off guard a little bit and we've had to push back our launch dates a few times, but uh, thankfully the model of it is to um, broadcast information 
uh, and send it out to the world. And we can do that from here in Smithville, Texas, uh, which brings up the first broadcast uh, that I'll be doing. Uh, it's called Light Austin Live. And it's a project I've been working on for a while. Um, about seven years ago, I started uh, going to Umlauf Gardens every Tuesday to study light. And um, it was a, a really a, a one of those times in your life when life is changing and you're looking for serenity and calm. And I found it there at Umlauf. Uh, I definitely found it at the Umlauf Gardens. I think because the statues represent such a wide range of human emotion and uh, human experience and in the human condition. Um, so uh, the program is based and written from Umlauf Gardens. And if you don't mind, let's just uh, run the video and, and show uh, the Light Austin Live uh, commercial. Okay, so that's uh, the Light Austin Life program. This is a, uh, if anyone is interested in the program, it's uh, uh, going to start on October the 27th. It will be broadcasting from here in Smithville, Texas, um, all over the United States. I have friends in the Northeast and, and in the Southwest and just all over. Uh, it starts on October the 27th and we are going to actually begin the program at my place at 11 Savannah's. I'm gonna carry the class virtually uh, through production up the Colorado River, upstream on the Colorado to Austin, Texas. We land in Barton Springs. We'll go on into the Umlauf Gardens. The next day, we will be at sunrise on the Capitol building on the second day of the symposium, October the 28th. My good friend, David Valdez, and he was a presidential White House photographer for Ronald Reagan and George Bush during the George Bush administration. He's gonna join me on a program that we call Soul of the Image and we'll be doing some production of that right here in Smithville. David is also the founder of the Georgetown Texas Photography Festival. And we've been friends now for about 10 years and, and we've learned a lot from each other's endeavors and we enjoy teaching. So that program is gonna be something that we'll be uh, actually building a documentary here in Smithville and Georgetown. Then of course, we're gonna go on and we're gonna film some things with Hannibal Akumbe and his program called the Jonah People. Uh, Hannibal has written a beautiful hymn called Hymn for the World, and I'll be filming Hymn for the World and showing exactly how I go about filming um, Hannibal and uh, this really profound hymn that he has created that will uh, pair with the Philadelphia Symphony. The next day, just Austin faces and places and poets that I know in the Austin area. We go on to downtown Smithville, and we'll be all over, you know, the, up the, uh, in the woodlands of uh, Bastrop County. Uh, looking at all kinds of things. Coming back to Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center on November the 2nd. And the last day is the, uh, the, this, the kind of the grand ending of the whole thing. We don't know what we're gonna do that day. Other, we're just gonna go out with our cameras and find out what uh, is going to be brought to us. I believe that photographs are very much a gift and um, you just never know what's gonna rise for you. You should always go into a photo sessions with planned ideas, but you should always also go into it to see what emerges and what kind of gifts could come. And so this program is uh, broadcasted from my place, 11 Savannahs. The broadcasts take place between seven and 9 p.m. and the price is $35 and you'll get all kinds of products with it. Let's go ahead and go off screen with that, Jill. 
in April. There we go. And uh, this is the little uh, uh, compass code card, the game of light that we created right here in Smithville, Texas. It has a grayscale on the back. It has a code of the things that I do in order that addresses all of the elements with photography. It's all under an umbrella I call situational awareness. You have to be aware of not only the light quality that's present, but the light that you hope to have. You may need to modify it. Um, you also need to understand more about what your subject is about. Sometimes as photographers, we tend to forget that the story is about the subject and we go into it with our artistic minds or our artistic renditions, which is good, but you should also listen to your subject and find out what's important to them and to maybe study your subject more and know more about how to tell its story. But this process is a, a 10 step process that goes from right brain to left brain and a, and a lot of fun to do. So that's my little teaching segment today for uh, the Eco Photo Fest. I'm sorry it's so brief, but it's sure a joy to be here today. And I, I want to wish you all the best uh, out there in the world with your cameras as your storytellers for the environment too. Wow, thank you, Randy. That was fantastic. I really appreciate you being here today. That was really wonderful. And that the little tool, I've seen that little, the, the slide, yeah. well, that, you showed me that before. That's just fantastic. It really explains everything. It's, so it's a nice little cool thing. Yeah. yeah Thank you so much for being here today to talk about light and image. Those are such amazing photos that you shared with us. I'm sure they're going to be very inspirational to everyone who's viewing this. And for talking about situa situational awareness, what a great concept. Um, talking about perception, taking control of the photograph and the story through the artist's eye, that all of that is just, you know, really appreciate you talking about that to us. You're today. welcome. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And to our viewers, thanks again for watching this Eco Photo Fest presentation. Thanks to all our sponsors and especially to our title sponsor, Doug's Plumbing. Thanks to April for all of her technical support back in the background there, making sure everything comes off as clearly and cleanly as possible. And, uh, and thanks to everybody who's uh, out there watching and, and turning this into a great program. Please join us for the live interactive Zoom speaker panels this week at six o'clock on Tuesday, October 13th and six o'clock on Thursday, October 15th, when you can ask Randy and the other panelists your questions about the things they presented throughout these eco photo sessions that you've seen. Please also mark your calendars for Wednesday, October 14th at 3 p.m. for the Outdoor Tourism Roundtable. We hope to see you there. And again, thank you all very, very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.